Hey guys, it's Shada. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a little break from the hand lettering and artwork, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make conversation hearts at home. Yes, you can make candy in your own kitchen, and it's really fun, and these in particular are really simple. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm gonna go through all the supplies and ingredients. First of all, you're gonna need lots of icing sugar or powdered sugar, two pounds to be exact. And then you'll need light or clear corn syrup. It can be a little harder to find than the dark stuff, but it's out there. You'll also need powdered unflavored gelatin. And then this is optional, but you might wanna use citric acid. It adds a little flavor and it's a preservative and it's totally up to you if you'd like to add it, it's optional. And then this is the important stuff, you need flavorings and colors. So skip the extracts, they don't really work. You'll want to get your hands on these concentrated candy flavorings. You can find them at bulk food or baking stores. And you can choose whatever flavors you want and then match them up with a color. So like pink as raspberry. Um, and then for supplies, you'll want to have a kitchen scale and a stand mixer or electric mixer. And then you'll need these heart-shaped fondant cutters. Um, they're little plungers and they're great for cutting out candies and fondants. So grab some of those at a baking store or a bulk food store. Okay, and let's get started. So to begin, we're gonna measure out a uh, quarter cup or 60 milliliters slash grams of water. And then you're gonna take one and a half teaspoons and sprinkle that on the surface of the water. And I'll list the recipe in the description of this video, just so you know, guys. All right, set that aside and it needs to sit at least five minutes. And then you're gonna take a pot and measure out another quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, measure that into the pot. And then you're gonna to add to that two teaspoons of the light corn syrup. Sorry, this is a terrible shot. It's just my arm, but it was really sticky. So once you get that corn syrup into the pot somehow, you're gonna put it on the heat, medium high heat is great. And you're just gonna stir it uh, until it's nice and hot and boiling. And at that point, as long as it's been five minutes, you can go ahead and add the gelatin mixture. Then keep stirring and heating that until all that gelatin has dissolved. And once that's happened, it just takes a moment, you're gonna put it into the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. And then you can add about a quarter of that two pounds of icing sugar. And then you're just gonna start mixing that on very slow speed. It'll be watery at first, and then continue to add the other three quarters. You're just gonna add them one quarter at a time, and it's gonna go from being quite watery to actually quite thick and hard. Um, so this is the final bit here. And remember to scrape your bowl down. Then once that's done, you're gonna turn that, you've basically got a sugar dough now, so you're gonna turn that dough out onto your work surface. Use a lot of powdered sugar to dust the work surface, and then you're gonna knead the dough. It's just like a dough except it's icing sugar and instead of flour you're using um, sugar. Once it's nice and satiny and not sticky you can cut it into as many sections as you want colors. So I usually do six or seven um, and you're just going to sort of form those into a ball or a disc and cover them up with a bit of saran wrap or plastic wrap to keep them moist and to keep them from drying out. Okay, and then it's time to add your flavors and colors. So it's a good idea to put some plastic gloves on so that you don't get flavored and colored. And then you're just going to put um, the flavoring into the and dough. Knead that flavoring in. And you just have to knead it for a moment. Uh, it takes about a minute to have it all incorporated. So I like to do one white, so I just did coconut, but now I'm gonna show you with a color and a flavor. So here I'm adding some pineapple flavor, and then I'm gonna add one or two drops of my yellow. I make a sort of a thumb print, put all the liquid in, fold the dough in on itself like an envelope to keep all that stuff in there, and then you're just gonna knead it. Knead it until all of that flavor and color is incorporated and it's even. And you can be pretty sure that once the color's evenly distributed, so is the flavoring. And then you're just gonna repeat that process with every flavor and color. So here I'm making a little thumbprint, put in one drop of pink, one uh, or two drops of the watermelon flavoring that I have, 
fold it in like an envelope, and then knead it up until everything is evenly incorporated. Like I said, I like to do one white. I do coconut white hearts, um, so I do that one first. It's a good idea also to switch your gloves in between every flavor and colors so that all your flavors and colors are really true and not muddled. And just set each one back under the plastic wrap as you finish it and continue forward with the rest of them. Here I'm doing a little bit of um, spearmint and blue and I think I ended up doing seven different colors just because I wanted to get the whole rainbow. Put them all under the plastic wrap and then it's time to actually roll them out and cut them out like little cookies. So keep the other ones under the wrap so that they the surface doesn't dry out. Here I'm going to take the yellow pineapple flavor. I'm putting down lots of powdered sugar onto my work surface. And then I'm going to knead this or work it a little just in case the surface has gotten a little bit of crusty and that gotten a little bit crusty and that will happen. So get it nice and soft and malleable again. And then you're just going to roll it out. I like to do them about a quarter inch in thickness. So get it nice and evenly rolled. And then you're going to take those little heart shaped fondant cutters and just cut them out. So you use them just like cookie cutters, press into the dough, pull it out. And then once you get the, um, the heart over your drying rack, you're just going to use that plunger to eject the candy from the cutter. And you can put these onto a baking sheet, just um, plain. I did mine lined with wax paper just for the cleanup sake, but they won't stick. So whatever you want, you could put them on a cutting board. It doesn't matter. And I like to use all three sizes of my fondant cutter to cut out these hearts. I think they have sort of a retro charm when they're sort of multi-sized. But if you want to go for that really true conversation heart look, then just use one uh, size so that they're all uniform. You can use probably the, the medium or large. And you're just going to repeat the process of rolling out the dough and cutting out the candies with each color of dough. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Leave the candies on the cookie sheet to dry for 24 hours. They'll be nice and crisp. And once they've dried, you can put them in jars or bags and give them as gifts. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe.